Hi everyone, welcome to JFrog Artifact Sessions. Today we are going to learn about JFrog Artifact. So in simple words, it's called as an artifact. From now on, I'm going to call it as artifact. Before going there, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Chandra Reddy, and I have been working as a DevOps engineer for the last eight years, and I have been working with uh, JFrog Artifact and as well as uh, all the other tools that are integrated in, uh, with JFrog Artifact. Let's go ahead and see like what is an artifact. Uh, so artifact is a uh, product of product from JFrog. So JFrog uh, just doesn't uh, provide artifact. It has so many other two uh, other tools that are provided. So which you can see it here when you go to JFrog. So they have so many other products apart from artifact. Um, if you go to here, you can see like they have something called as pin tray, and they have something called as mission uh, control, and they have something called as an X-ray. But out of all these products, uh, uh, JFrog is uh, famous for its one and only artifact tree, uh, so which is a very powerful tool, which I'm going to explain to you like how it is powerful and uh, what are the things that we can do with JFrog. Um, before going there, uh, so let's uh, let's see what is an artifact. So artifact is something like you can you can store it some uh, some place and you can use them uh, whenever you want. So those are called as artifacts. So it may it uh, it need not to be in a software package or a binary or a, you wanted to build uh, a card, then you need some tools. So there you are going to store in your storeroom. So the storeroom is going to act as an artifact. So where you are going to store all the uh, tools that are necessary for you to build your card, and once you need them, you are going to get it and you are going to use them. So uh, artifacts are uh, kind of those things. But we are coming to JFrog Artifact Tree. Artifact Tree is a uh, repository manager. So where it is going to maintain uh, a repository for all your artifacts. So it is going to artifacts like software packages or binaries or Docker images. So whatever it may be. So it is going to store them and it is going to maintain them there. Um, uh, basically, uh, the main reason why JFrog has got so much of uh, 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 power to its uh, tool is like it is an uh, enterprise level tool. Okay, which means like you can maintain any number of uh, projects that are uh, that are that are entitled for your uh, enterprise. Let's say like you're working on a large enterprise and you have so many um, projects that you want to maintain. So JFrog would help you uh, in order to maintain them very easily. Compared to all other tools, it is very easy to use, and and uh, it also provides security. So it also provides security, and also it provides an high availability, and it can be used across your entire uh, uh, organization. Like uh, let's say, like your organization is distributed one. Um, so let's say some someone is working in US and someone is working from India, and let's say like uh, someone from India has developed some application and those uh, packages needs to be available for uh, US team, US team so that they can start their development. Let's say like I have some uh, package that needs to be there in uh, at some location, and whenever a developer comes in, then he can directly uh, he should be able to directly download those. Uh, binaries and use them in his project so uh, there are so many other ways which we can do it but uh, uh, everything everything is like uh, a single tool like we cannot integrate everything to uh, everything to our, uh, your any any tool uh, kind of repository that you have let's say like i'm going to use uh, nuget in order to store my binaries and access them whenever i need them so that's fine but but what if uh, the other end of the uh, team is using something else? So we cannot integrate both of them. But whereas coming to JFrog, you can integrate them very easily. So that's the uh, that's the power uh, JFrog has, and it helps you in uh, providing a continuous delivery uh, pipeline. Let's say like I have uh, some build process in which I am going to build some applications. And whenever uh, the build is completed, I don't want to do anything. I just wanted to upload it to uh, one location. And depending upon the uh, arrival of the package, and I need some uh, some other task to be triggered. So which we can do using JFrog. But whereas uh, 
going with other tools it is it is not going to be possible so now we know like uh, how to uh, what is jfrog and uh, why we need at factory um, so again i'm going to explain you clearly like uh, what is exactly artifacts art factory and how we are going to use them uh, so for now an art factory is nothing but and repository <coughs> which is used to maintain your uh, packages source code uh, sorry uh, packages and any other things that you want like uh, uh, packages binaries images so whatever you want to store that store and you want to use them you can use it using jform art factory okay before going into um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Rock. Let's see. Let's see, like how we used to maintain them earlier. So earlier we used to maintain them uh, using a folder, shared folder, in which whenever a build is completed, we automatically uh, we used to upload it to uh, some shared folder from where someone else used to pick it up and uh, do the uh, further steps, like maybe a deployment or use it in other projects for development. So. Uh, that was that was a process and uh, let's say like i wanted to maintain uh, uh, some n number of uh, uh, images docker images let's say like i wanted to maintain some n number of uh, docker images at a uh, uh, shared path and when i when i want to go and get something so what i'm going to find there is bunch of folders with uh, bunch of images but i can't surely get like uh, the version that i am looking for so it is going to be very difficult and as well as uh, let's say like um, there was an image and uh, let's say someone has uh, uh, access to the shared folder and someone has downloaded it so i can't uh, uh, track who has downloaded it and what he has downloaded it for and uh, these are the different things uh, that a shared folder uh, uh, lacks lacks in so shared folder doesn't provide any analytics or it, it is not going to provide any security on user basis and uh, uh, shared folder cannot be uh, fast and reliable so let's say like we have some um, something has uh, gone wrong and our shared folder has been deleted so there is no way for us to recover it until unless you have uh, backed uh, backed up your entire server so that is uh, that those are the types of issues that we are going to find in share folder okay <clears throat> so now we know like uh, what are the what are the things that we use like uh, earlier before jfrog uh, now let's go ahead and see like what is jfrog and what are the different services uh, jfrog at factory and what are the different services that are provided by jfrog at factory so jfrog at factory provides two types of services one is going to be on premises and another one is cloud services okay so on premises you are going to uh, uh, download the application and install your application and you are going to maintain it in your uh, maintain those servers and everything but whereas for the cloud uh, service of jfrog uh, everything is maintained by them and moreover it also provides some <coughs> community version uh, where you, you can you can uh, have some 10 tb of uh, sorry 1 tb of uh, uh, downloading and 10 gb of upload per month so that is going to be free for you um, uh, but most of the companies uh, uh, either maintain uh, on premises or it is going to go for uh, cloud service. So basically, um, there are two types one is on prem and another one is cloud services. And if you go to on premises, there are again three types of uh, three ways you can, uh, where you can uh, uh, use on premises. One is using Docker images. So there is a Docker image available with JFrog uh, pre-installed. So you can directly pull the doc Docker image and you can use the Docker image. And the second thing is like you can download the manual package and you can install them manually, or you can use uh, you can you can directly install using the installation software that are provided. So let's go ahead and see like. What are the different uh, types of installations that we have for on-prem? So if you click on on-prem trial, it is going to take you to uh, a trail version for on-premises version. And it is going to ask you uh, different things. Once you provide all these details, then it is going to ask you type, uh, like what is the type of uh, application that you wanted to download. So here are the different types of installations. 
installing on Linux or Solaris or Mac OS. Another one is uh, installing on Windows. Another one is installing on Docker and installing on Kubernetes. So these are the different types of installations that are available for our purposes. So you can select uh, whichever type is uh, suitable for you. Uh, so here we are going. To, uh, I'm going to use installation on Windows, and I'm going to um, show you like how the installation is done uh, on Windows. Okay, let's go ahead and see uh, uh, what we need to do in order to do uh, installation on Windows. So before installing on Windows, you need to download the package that is available. Uh, that you can get it from so here I have a uh, come to the page where you can download the artifact pro so I have already downloaded this artifact uh, uh, so and once you have downloaded what you are going to get is an, a zip file so if you go here I have already downloaded into downloads and here we have something called the zip file so this is the zip file that we are going to get uh, when you click on standalone so this we need to extract it so i have already extracted it so it is going to be this folder that will be extracted <coughs> either you can uh, have it in downloads or you can create a new folder called the jf uh, artifact or something like that so whichever is convenient for you and uh, then once you have extracted those files then you need to go to bin folder uh, and then copy the path and go to the command prompt run as administrator now you are going to lose screen because uh, i have run it as an administrator let me get back with normal Make sure you run it as an administrator in order to do the, uh, complete the installation. Once you are here, you go to the directory, and there we have something called an artifact. So if you execute this patch file, then it is going to run this. But most of the times you are going to face some issues like uh, uh, Java Home is not set and the Java uh, runtime is not set. And those are the issues because you haven't uh, installed the latest version of uh, Java and JRE. So you need to download Java and JRE, uh, JRE latest versions and you need to install them before uh, working on it. So once the installation is done, uh, so it is going to be available here. So if you go to local post, colon 8081 artifact slash web, web app slash home there you are going to uh, have uh, when you browse this url you are going to have the home screen so once you are here uh, the first thing that you need to do is you need to log in so the login credentials are available here um, within the readme file so if you go to the readme file and if you see here So the username is going to be admin and the password is going to be password. So these are the default username and passwords. Once you are there, then you need to um, add a new administrative uh, administration uh, password and remove these uh, uh, default username and passwords. So once you are done with that, then uh, you should be able to log in. So here we are. So here we are at uh, Artifactory homepage. So as you can see, Artifactory is happily serving zero artifacts, which means like there are no artifacts available. Um, now we are going to uh, learn about different things in Artifactory. Like first thing is going to be about administration side, where we are going to create the repositories, and then we are going to add new users and uh, uh, we are going to create new groups and we are going to look into permissions and we are going to look into the uh, access tokens as well as we are going to look into the uh, APIs. So these are the different things that we are going to look into and uh, then we are going to look into the builds. Uh, so how, how it will be integrated, how the build name, last build and last uh, build time will be uh, available here 
and then we are going to learn about the analytics like uh, who has downloaded what and how many times it has been downloaded and all of the things um so this is how we install uh, on windows and if you wanted to install on uh, any other operating system other than windows uh, then you can go to the installation guide from uh, here uh, using rpm so here you can uh, download those uh, uh, standalone uh, service for on time cat and uh, you can install on whichever uh, operating system you want to install and if it is as, uh, if it is for docker images then you can directly <coughs> download the docker images and you can uh, uh, run those docker images which will automatically get you jfrog okay after this now we are clear like uh, what is jfrog artifactory jfrog artifactory is nothing but a repository which is going to store all your artifacts okay and uh, why do we need jfrog artifactory because it is secure it has high availability and it is integrated to many of the build systems and uh, it has uh, it it can it, it has uh, uh, capability of uh, uh, providing uh, access to the users on uh, role base or you can provide access to the groups and all other things so uh, we need jfrog in order to maintain uh, uh, enterprise level uh, artifacts at one uh, one location and give access depending upon the uh, people who are working on that particular projects and as well as at the end of this you are able to uh, uh, see how we can install the uh, artifactory uh, so all you need to do is you need to download the standalone uh, artifactory pro version and you need to <coughs> yeah uh, you need to extract the uh, folder that you have downloaded and then uh, run the install batch file and if you want to run it as a service then you need to uh, go to the same folder to the bin folder and here we have something called as an install service pad. so if you run it as an administrator then it will automatically configure it as to run it uh, to run as a service so every time it is going to start automatically and every time you switch off and switch on your system it will be automatically available for you to uh, use and um, uh, now we have uh, learned the basics of installation. Uh, in the next session, we are going to learn about how to configure your artifactory with uh, uh, Java options and uh, all other things. So the uh, complex installation and uh, uh, we are going to learn about complex installation in the next sessions.